Today, let's tackle the lathe. This is a Meteor wood lathe, and this is a Glaswegian made lathe, roughly from the, I don't know, 50s or 60s, this kind of era. Um, I've never seen another one like it. There was one bit of information on the internet, and uh, when I stumbled across this, I fell in love with it. Um, so I just had to have it. It came with a lot of attachments. And in the last video that we did, we mounted it on this table and started looking at the motor. Typically, I wouldn't buy anything that's not very common. Um, I tend to buy anything that's cast iron and got a decent age to it and has a pretty good build quality. Um, but wood lathes, I feel, are a little bit different. If you've got some attachments with it um, and it's been you know reasonably looked after and, most importantly, it's unmolested, so no one's touched it before, no one's kind of, you know, messed about with it. Um, it looks nice and it's heavy, then I'll probably buy it. Uh, with this one, um, I've built my own wood lathe. Um, if I've got a picture, here's a picture of it. And that did me, you know, did me absolutely fine. About four years ago, uh, five years ago now maybe, uh, when I built my previous lathe. Um... I wanted to get into wood turning, and wood turning is not cheap. And buying a decent lathe, um, when I say decent, something that's got, you know, quite nice features on it. It's got, you know, an inbuilt light, it's got variable speed, it's got enough length, um, and, you know, you've got the capabilities for turning a bowl on it. Um, that's where I was at. But the problem was at the time, those kind of lathes that you would be looking at is, you know, mainly overseas um, machinery and they're not cheap. You look at some of the Axminster lathes, um, you know, that has got a lot of um, parts and accessories to it. And you, you're talking, you know, for something basic with a few bits, about £400. Um, and I didn't have the budget. Uh, so I bought a treadmill motor. Uh, I found a lathe bed. I built my own tailstock, I machined a, a Morse taper 1 into the tailstock, and I did very little with it. I <laughs> uh, spent a lot of time building it and making it, and um, I, I don't know, I just didn't really use it a great deal. I was going through a, a few moves uh, with work and, and uh, home-wise, and I slogged it around from about two workshops. Um, and I kind of didn't really enjoy using it. Um, there was nothing wrong with it. It worked fine. In fact, it worked really good. So when I got this shop, I then got that little itch again and I wanted to get a wood lathe, which is why I stumbled across this one. I wasn't massively looking, uh, cause I already had one, but I came across this one that was just down in Sheffield. Um, an old boy who had it. Um, didn't know much about it. It'd been in his shed for years, uh, probably a bit similar to me. And, um, it came with a lot of stuff. Table saws, um, faceplate on the back for bowl turning, about three different jocks, um, a multi-change, um, one as well, which was really cool. It had a sanding, a big 10 inch disc sander attachment on the back, tailstock, all, all kinds of tool rests. And it cost me, uh, probably about a quarter of what one of the Chinese mills um, did. So I already had the motor. It didn't come with a motor. Um, I already had the motor, the control panel that I built, and a light. So, yeah, this has kind of gone full circle. So I think what we're going to do today is um, get the belt on here, and I'll show you how to measure the belt, um, and see kind of how it feels and how it works. There's a few little things that we need to go through and just check out, and then I want to do a full restoration on this. Okay, this is the headstock, so we're just going to take this off here, and I haven't done anything with it from my last video, because to be honest, I bought the belt, and it took a hell of a lot of time. So, I managed to buy the right one first time, which is a new first for me, um, and look should have it, it's actually the correct size belt. How I did this is from the pulley here, I selected the smallest one, um, the reasoning we'll get onto later. Um, in fact, we might as well go through it now. So the reason why I selected the smallest one is this is a DC motor. Now DC motors aren't very torquey at low speeds. So you kind of want 
this to be on the smallest pulley to generate more speed to increase the speed of your spindle. Um, although having said that, from when it was on the, the last spindle uh, that I had, this worked, uh, sorry, the last lathe that I had, this worked great. Um, even on the lower speeds, it's, you know, I never had a problem with it, um, you know, which lucky me. Um, but even so, I selected the smallest pulley um, and everything's still going to fit within the belt guard, etc. Um, so, what do we need to do? We need to take this off. This is very heavy, so the little amount of time of me moving this, the better. We need to start making a control panel, which you can't see, which is down here. Uh, and we have the previous parts already. So... Um, we will be facing some issues, no doubt. We are currently in the coronavirus. There are a lot of things I can't get, so some things I'm going to have to um, get by without or try something else. So there might be a few little bits and bobs with this. Um, so let's take a look at the motor and the control panel next up. Okay, here is the control panel from my previous um, attempt at wood lathe, and to be honest, this worked really well. I did show a little bit of an example on part one of the video. Um, as I say, this was built at the time on a budget, um, which I suppose this one still is to a degree, um, but a lot of the parts I already have, so they're kind of free to me. That's what I told the missus. Um, so we have obviously the emergency stop, um, this isn't a braked DC motor, so when you press this you have to wait for the wind down of the motor, you know, this is just me using this, this, I'm not going to try and sell it, you know, anything like that, this is for me and my benefit only. Um, these are one of the DLM speed controls, these are about £14, um, it's the DC51 if that helps you. And then everything is also connected up to a, a tachometer. Um, which just kind of sits below here, which I'm not going to fit the tachometer because I never really used it anyway, to be honest. So all I'm going to be using is the speed control for the treadmill motor. Um, this was also in a, I think it's an 80 millimeter um, spindle mount aluminium holder that I bought. That took about three months to arrive. I think I bought it off somewhere like Banggood. Um, I've got mixed opinions on there, um, but it took a ridiculous amount of time to get here, <clears throat> which wasn't great. Um, so I'm, I'm going to recommend spending an extra 10% to get one, you know, if you're in a rush. If you're not in a rush, buy one on Banggood. Um, this, I don't know if I even want to fit this as well, to be honest, but I'll fit it, you know, just, just for comment's sake. So, so let's... Um, First off, let's take off the faceplate on here and start looking at how the belt fits and is going to mount up. So we need to be able to square the belt, both of the pulleys with the belt connected to see how that's going to fit. One thing I did notice, um, well just now actually, the, when I went to pick up this lathe, I said, oh have you done anything to it? Apart from put the, mount, uh, the motor on the, on the base. And he says, oh, yeah, I made a bench and had some silly um, grease nipples on. And I didn't think anything of it. But I believe that these should actually be um, um, push oilers that go onto here. Um, I've never seen a, a machine spindle with grease nipples on. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I need to do a bit more research. But I don't think that grease in a spindle like this is the correct application but I could be wrong just feeling for any kind of play or movement within this um, there's not any that I can feel um, and from what I understand there's no kind of lateral adjustment either to be able to uh, keep this tight um, there's three mounting bolts here that I'm going to remove those probably drop out the spindle give it a closer inspection and then we're going to put it straight back in put the belt on and then try and marry this up um, this is going to have to come back out anyway when we restore this um, but I kind of want to get everything working first before I restore everything get all excited uh, and then not you know not being able to play with it because the belt was the wrong size or something wasn't quite right so I'm going to test everything up first see how it feels see how it looks and see how it kind of performs roughly um, and then probably not restore it and just use it for the rest of eternity as it is. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, I've just put on the faceplate just to kind of get it started here. I've given it a few taps. Now, there's four screws, uh, sorry, three screws in the front and three in the back. Uh, this one, I'm not 100% sure what was this actually connecting onto. I can't feel anything behind there. Um, whereas this section here is uh, a separate piece, which is kind of morphed onto this. Um, when the guy, the, the guy I bought this off who had it, had the V-belt interlock leather belting on here. Um, I'm not a fan of that because it kind of stretches over time. Not that these rubber belts don't, but they kind of, it happens a bit less with these. Um, and it's harder to, it's obviously you can't adjust these, but it's also quite difficult to adjust the leather ones. Um, plus they're quite noisy from what I, from what I found. Um, so that's the reason why I went for one of these and this is why I'm doing it this way and not doing the, um, the V-link. So, I'm going to give this a few little taps, probably with a brass punch, see if I can get this off. Um, but again, if you're doing something like this, um, then yeah, don't go nuts. Okay, I'm pretty confident that this shouldn't have grease in here. Not either this old, this brown, and this smelly. This stuff, yeah, it smells pretty bad. Um, as well, that is, it's not too bad. It ain't too bad. But, oh God, it stinks. Absolutely stinks. And everything's covered in grease, so uh, this one. Put the gloves on. Okay, thought I'd just bring you in here just to see what I'm looking at. Um, what I'm going to try and do is remove as much of this crud on here. I don't know what this guy was turning, but everything's covered in this black, it's like oil dust. That's a shame. Uh, yeah, it's like earwax. Okay, I'm going to see if I, there's some sort of Allen key or um, hex head bolt. Ah, like that one there. Okay, uh, I've managed to clean up some of the horrific grease that was on here, um, and it kind of looks, well it is, the, it looks like these are um, almost like a, a C-nut, I'm going to call them, for a C-spanner to then notch onto these, and that probably gives you your lateral tightness. Uh, these have done, well, they've been done previously by a gorilla, um, with a punch, which to be honest, that's kind of the way I'm going to have to do it because I don't think I've got anything of that size. Let's go from there. Okay, that's interesting. Um, there is actually a bearing in here. Let's see that. Let's get a torch. There is actually a bearing in there which will replace on the restoration. Probably not in this in this mini series. And if we can get hold of one, uh, definitely not in the minutes. Um, okay, let's see if we can kind of tap this out now and uh, and remove the spindle. Okay, I've moved over to the bench because I'm going to get oil all over the all over the base, and I don't really want to do that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on a time lapse. Um, I'm I'm going to have to kind of figure it out as I'm going along because there's no manuals on this, there's no information, there's no uh, schematics or or anything. So I've kind of got to work out this as best I can uh, and think how would I make this. 
um, and, and what's the best way to assemble this. So kind of work backwards, if you like. There's a grub screw on here that I've removed. Um, I'm going to shine my torch a little bit more down in these sides here. I'll take the faceplate off and see if there's, you know, I can shine a bore scope in or, or kind of have a bit more of a look round. There might be some bolts underneath. Um, but at the minute, everything is pretty rock hard. Um, I'm just looking here in the casting. There's a mounting bracket that goes under the lathe. Um, that might have something to do with it. We might have to take this section off. These are two section pieces here, um, so it might be worth taking this off and doing a little bit more digging. Let's time lapse. Okay, so I did uh, work backwards and worked out that this spindle size at the back here uh, was obviously a lot smaller than this piece that was sticking out. So this front cap that was on, the paint was that thick. It looked like it was, um, it was a, a casting into it. I then got a magnet to see if this was magnetic and it is not. Um, it is aluminium. So obviously this had to be a detachable part. Where has that got me? Well, it's kind of got me no further apart from there's no piece on the front now um, because the I think I think it's got to go out spindle uh, nose front from working this out. Well, I'm pretty sure it has now um, Now that this front cap is off. I don't know. I need to put a nut on here to pr try and protect this um, but I think it's going to go forward. So we're going to give it a few little knocks on here. I'm going to put something on the edge uh, just to protect these threads and use a nylon mallet to be able to knock this laterally. Okay, so I've just knocked a few times um, from the back and you can kind of hear it from the sound that it's it's getting pretty tough. Um, so I'm just kind of going to go over everything and make sure that there's nothing that's, um, you know, like a hidden grub screw somewhere like that. You know what the Scots are like, they're always doing, they're always up to something. trying to find if there's anything that's going to give me any kind of clue as to how this comes off um, what my probably my next attempt would be is to cr trying to lock this spindle here and then to rotate this because at the moment where we are the reason why it's not coming out any further is because the pulley um, isn't going to go any further and I kind of don't want to damage anything I can't use a puller on here because I'm going to run the risk of damaging this um, I can't pull it the other way because of this. Now this to me looks like an adapter, um, but there's no way uh, that this will go on. Um, I can't get this off without kind of marring this up, which may be where we lead to next. Um, but this looks to be a little bit more modern in its machining uh, from these over here. But I can't, I can't kind of figure out. I'm guessing how this is going to fit onto here. That that's just a sleeve that either you know someone's made or it's part of it as kind of a, a kit. It is most taper one in the front as it is the rear. Um, the guy I bought it off definitely didn't make this. Um, uh, and there's no, there's no grub screws on here to suggest. Uh, it is a, you know, it's a really well made part. The mystery continues. Okay, so it has been a few minutes, um, and I've kind of not got anywhere further as of yet. The only thing that 
I can kind of take off next is the headstock to the bed which is just on these four screws in either corner now where these actually go up is nowhere near the the main shaft of the lathe uh, which would kind of suggest to me that these have got nothing to do with it apart from bolt the headstock onto here this piece uh, I hope you can see that okay I think is just a dowel so this is just going to be doweled into the top for um, accuracy these are just where the um, the flat bar actually bolts onto the bed here which another reason why I bought this lathe is that these are easily to manufacture um, so they're just flat pieces here so I could effectively make this as long as uh, well however long your CNC table is um, so I can extend this I can shorten it not that I'm going to but in future I can always modify these legs as well to kind of do a bit of a u-shape so if i did want to form bowls on the front i could always uh, change out these legs probably not that i'm going to do that um but it is always an option um as well as i could separate the headstock completely and have a separate bed module if you like so it would be um you could just have the headstock on a meter length and you could move this back and forward on a set of runners if that makes sense um and you'd only have to move the the tail stock to you know however long the part you want to do it so it's quite a nice design this um which again this is why i buy older machinery because they're you know the built it's not going to vibrate it's not going to you know there's no little tiny screws on here um everything is is properly made let's bolt these off as a attempt of desperation and uh and kind of see where we go from there Okay, there were the two dowels I was telling you about. Um, right, this is much nicer to work on now. Good. So, with this now taken off here, um, yeah, let's be honest, this has turned into a bigger job than, it, than I thought it was going to. So we'll probably end up just either restoring this or it's really broken down, so this isn't a big job. Okay, now the only downside to this restoration is that this isn't a label this is a transfer uh, that has been made um, and I'm going to be totally honest with you is I've taken lots and lots of high definition photos of this I've taken um, now I can't afford to have a transfer made um, at the minute to be honest um, so we're going to have to sacrifice this however when the time comes and it will come uh what i've done temporarily is i have um uh, taken a watermark image of this i've put this into fusion 360 and i've created some stainless steel tags with the meteor logo on here with this outline um i can't have made in scotland or the small lettering because the laser cannot cannot make that um well enough what I have done is I've been in touch with a man called um, Keith T Kevin Tutley. He's very big on Instagram and he does a lot of the American guy and he does a lot of the restoration tags for people like Hantel Rescue, um, Vintage Machinery, Keith Rucker, and he's done some for A-Bomb, you know, big YouTube names like that. And he has quoted me. I won't repeat what the you know rough price was. Um but it's more than I can kind of afford at the minute. Again, you know, we're in the middle of the coronavirus. Uh, work is not great at the moment. Um, so they will have a temporary tag on here in case anything happens to me or, you know, whatever. It's going to have a, a Meteor stainless steel brush tag on here for now. Um, and when I'm, you know, a little bit more flush with cash, uh, I will get the correct transfer made and put on this lathe. Um, so lots of photos have been taken of this image and I do have the file and 
Uh, Mr. Mr. Utley has uh, confirmed that he would be able to manufacture this from the photos I've sent him. So just wanted to clear that up. Sorry to go on about it, but it's a big thing for me, this. You know, this is the only way of I identifying really what this machine is. And, you know, it's a piece of history. Um, there's not many of these out there. Um, I've read one blog and in many, many years he's never seen one. And I think I'm probably the only other person with it in the country at the minute. Uh, if you have got one of these, please do send me a message. I'll be fascinated to know. And if we can make kind of like a bit of a, a meteor club, <laughs> then, uh, you know, that'd be great. And it's, a, you know, another machine that's going to be restored and looked after for another, you know, 50, 60, 70 years. Okay. Really annoyingly, I've just spent a little bit of time being very delicate with some paraffin and it's cleaned up really nicely, um, which kind of gets me onto thinking I could try and mass this up and grind around it and then paint around it. Um, as well, what I will mention is I think that this lathe has been painted in the past. Uh, I'm not a fan of this colour, to be honest. I really, I really don't like this colour. It's a bit like a haggis that's been left outside for four years. Um, yeah, not not a great fan of that. Um, I'm trying to think what the best way of doing this is. I think when I come to do restore it, I will try my best not to knacker it. As soon as I touch anything around here, it's scrap. It will just annoy me. Um, and kind of my talent, I don't know if I'll be able to do this around there with the kit that I've got. I don't know what the best thing is going to be. If you've got any suggestions, leave a comment. Okay, I'm just revisiting uh, just the grub screws, to be honest. And I think, I think, I think, I think, um, that this was probably manufactured while the pulley wasn't pre-drilled, just looking at it here. Uh, and it looks like how these grub screws are made, I've not seen these like this before, only the, you know, quite the sharp pointed ones, is probably that these were drilled on here, um, and then these were lined up and probably trued. Um, and there's only this point here and this point. There are no other grub screws on here internally and externally on it so that I can kind of see. I have checked if there's another hidden grub screw in there and there definitely isn't. That's something if you're doing like this, often on old machines that they'd use a grub screw to lock it in and then they'd put another one on top uh, just to keep that other grub screw tight, like a, a two threads pushing against each other to keep it tight. So that's another thing to uh, to just bear in mind. Um, that might be a might be a bit of a stumbling block that might get you out of a bit of trouble there. I think, I don't know. I don't know. Is this a time to be a gorilla? I don't think it is. It's never a good time to be a gorilla. Let's go make a cup of tea. Okay, I'm running out of options. Um, I haven't started swinging on this yet. I just wanted to try and see if I could you know, break this, um, not break, I mean, like put some brakes on this. Um, I have got a rubber strap that goes on here that I use for taking off the chuck on the MyFord. Um, that's just broken. That's no good to me. Um, uh, so I'm kind of running a little bit of ideas. I think when this starts to sm move around, which there's no reason why it shouldn't. Um, I can't see a keyway on this, front or rear at all. Um, so the only thing that, for my eyes, the only thing that's holding this in is the grub screws, which there's nothing in there. There are no keyways on this at all. Um, so yeah, I'm, I think what I'm gonna have to do is make something that's gonna go into here. Maybe just put a bolt if I've got one. Um, and then just trying to jiggle this, maybe give it some heat inside um, this section here, if you can see that, uh, just inside here. But there is nothing at all. 
So what I am going to do, I'm probably trying to make a um, shorter video. So I'm going to call this a wrap for now. Um, for those who do watch my channel, uh, very much appreciated. Um, see if you've got any ideas. And um, I'm you know, always happy to listen. Obviously, you know, please do watch the video and actually look what I've been doing instead of you know, get watching it to the end of the video and then thinking of ideas that we've already gone through. Um, yeah, that's not cool. So please do actually watch the video and look what I've tried to do. And yeah, instead of just putting a comment on here that there's probably a grub screw in there. Don't do that. It's not cool. Um, so on that note, I'll see you next time. Uh, please do comment. Uh, leave a like and um, I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully we can uh, get a few more ideas on this.